Hey guys, in this video, I want to address the question, should we use the deployment object provided by Kubernetes, which is also supported in OpenShift, or we should go and use the deployment config object in OpenShift? Uh, and this is, of course, for clients and users who are using OpenShift as their uh, Kubernetes orchestration platform. Now, the answer to this question is very simple. Um, the recommendation by Red Hat or OpenShift team is to always use the deployment object as much as you can. Um, and the reason why is because um, deployment config object prefers consistency where the deployment object focuses on the availability. So if you look closely at the documentation of uh, Red Hat OpenShift, you will see this question um, have been addressed, which is the comparison between deployment and deployment configs, and also the recommendation and what is the differences between uh, both of them. Now, to summarize this, um, you um, would only go with the deployment object and not the deployment config if you are not going to use any uh, advanced behaviors um, uh, or advanced features from deployment config. So deployment configs gives you the ability to uh, trigger uh, based on a new image stream tag or based on a change within the template itself. So if you're not really interested in that, then the deployment object is sufficient and it's actually uh, recommended. So here, if you look closely, what it says is that the deployment config really focuses and prefer the consistency where the deployment objects takes the availability over the consistency. Meaning that if one of our worker nodes uh, went down while the deployer part of the deployment config is trying to deploy or scale our microservices, the, that deployer part will not really get replaced. So the process of the scaling up or scaling down in deployment config, the desired state will not be achieved due to the uh, worker node going down. Okay. However, for example, if you are using the deployment rollouts or if you are using the deployment, uh, I mean, uh, object, even if the node goes down or even if there is some kind of an interruption within your Kubernetes cluster, the deployment is going to try again and again to actually fulfill that desired state. So this is a very, I think, critical point because um, if let's say, for example, you want to achieve that high availability and you want to make sure that your pod is always recreated or redeployed, then you have to be very careful with the deployment config, especially if, for example, your um, cluster is not stable enough. Quick, to sorry. demonstrate what I'm trying to say here, so if I actually do OC git pods and then I'm going to watch the namespace and you can see I have a couple of nginx uh, pods here and then if I do oc git deployment configs I have one deployment config here and what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new deployment config and let me just change that to nginx um, let's say going down for example okay so what will happen is the deployment config automatically going to create a new, a new deploy object and I'm going to do, um, delete that deploy um, pod. So as soon as I de delete the deploy pod, you can see the, the Nginx pod that was supposed to be created by our deployment config deploy pod um, was also terminated. So if I do OC, let me just try to clean this. So OC get um, deployment config. You can see here that the desired state was supposed to be one. However, the current state is still zero and the process was stuck because I have manually deleted the deploy pod. And the reason why this happened because the deploy pod was on a running state where I have interrupted the process of deploying the actual Nginx uh, uh, deployment pod. So this is why it's recommended to always use a deployment object as much as we can, uh, unless we would like to use some of the um, deployment config features uh, um, in advanced behaviors. 
Okay, so I hope this uh, video addressed the question and I hope uh, it was helpful for you guys. So thanks a lot.